Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves for the one and only World Improv Network comedy show on Mile High Sports Radio. Take part in the show by giving your suggestions or questions to the cast for each show segment throughout the week or live during the show by hitting them up on Facebook at World Improv Network, on Twitter at World Improv Net, or by calling in to Mile High Sports Radio studio line. Now, enjoy the show. <laughs> It's local. It's global. You're listening to Win World Local News. Win World Local News on Mile High Sports Radio. I'm Potter Smith. A breaking news into the Win World Local News sports desk from Win Sports reporter Marie Callender, who's in Memphis, Tennessee, for the 2017 Diarrhea and Vomit Championships. How's the intense indigestion action going, Marie? Well, you know, down here in Memphis, Tennessee, we really pride ourselves on regular indigestion. So we just, we thought that we local people were going to take <laughs> over and, and really have the championship. I, that, that man over there, he just, he juiced a bunch of pies and that caused him to just throw up about five <laughs> times in <laughs> one hour. Sir, hold on for just one second. And... So anyways, down here in, in Tennessee, we's, we's get diarrhea regularly, and we really thought we had a guy, a man named Chet. That's Chet right there. He's, he's actually just pooping right now. It's real watery. And But who to thunk? You know who the winner is this year? It's a baby. There's been a baby flown in from Alaska, a six-week-old baby, and the mom just had her tit poking out, and the baby's just drinking the milk all day and just diarrhea and throwing up constantly. I'd really love to interview this baby, but it just keeps puking and diarrhea all over the place. And the mom's real happy because they get to take home free pizzas for the championship. Back to you. Wow, a baby's going to win the title. That's amazing. I wonder if that's even legal. Our next stop story is brought to us by win contributor Tyler from Los Angeles, California. During Pride Weekend, Caitlyn Jenner, a staunch Republican and supporter of President Trump, petitioned, petitioned the Donald to transition the first family to Donna and Melania. To hear how this historic metamorphosis would affect life in the Oval Office and the U.S. presidency on a world stage, let's go live to win Chief White House correspondent Anderson Cooperton, who's in the White House Rose Garden with all the rosy details. Anderson? All right, Potter, this is Anderson Cooperton. I'm here in the White House Rose Garden. I'll tell you, I had a little Pepsi this morning and it garbled my words. I'll tell you something, I talked to the Donald this morning, he is not happy about this at all, Potter. And I'll tell you one thing, he is not transitioning. But I tell you something, we do have a, a, a store steep in the White House here. Her name is Carol Smeinlin. Carol, thank you for being with us in the Rose Garden today. I appreciate you being here. How can you enlighten us about uh, the denial of the transition from the Donald to Donna? Yes, so it's actually, he's not, denying it he actually just doesn't have the capacity that man is all masculine energy he doesn't have an ounce of feminine energy in his being so he's actually not denying it consciously he just doesn't have the capacity to be a female I, I understand, but I do notice with the thinning hair, could that transition into female hair so there is only a partial representation of this underserved population? Hmm, that's a great question. And actually, just the other day, I saw some of his follicles thickening and becoming a little more lustrous. And so perhaps just certain parts of his body might become feminine, but I will tell you this, the Donald will never fully transition into being a woman. Okay, what I understand too is that Donald did paint his nail as a Halloween joke this past October. Could you speak to the fact that he painted the American flag on every single of his nine fingernails? He did, and the reason that he still has it on his nails 
is because he took so long painting him because he's really quite stupid. I just have to share that. His IQ is quite low. And so it took him too long, which, and now he doesn't want to put the effort to take it off. Thank you so much. Well, I'll tell you from the Rose Garden here, we got the first tip on the Don, 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 Donna, Donald. Back to you, Potter. Wow. The Donald to the Donna with Melania. Our next breaking story is brought to us by wind contributor Aisha from Bridgetown, Barbados, from Germany to Argentina, from France to Canada, and everywhere in between, pop star icon Rihanna is putting world leaders on blast via the Twitter hashtag Fund Education. What does she mean by Fund Education? What is the true purpose of her tweet bombs to heads of state? Well, to get all 140 characters out of this story, let's go live to win social media reporter Tammy Faye, who's trending with Rihanna's Twitter publicist in New York City. Tammy Faye? Yeah, thanks. So, I'm here with Rihanna's Twitter publicist, Charlie, and he's here to shed some light on Rihanna's intentions around the hashtag fund education program. Charlie, What's Rihanna really wanting to do with the world? Well, what, what, what Rihanna's wanting to do is uh, I, I, uh, she wanted me to pass on the fact that uh, the hashtag was wrong and it was supposed to say fund application. So is that, uh, yeah, we just did it all wrong and she's like wanting the application and get that out there. It's a, it's a new song called fund application. You're like first in the nation I like to have money and that's why my mama calls me Sonny those are just some of the, the lyrics from the song of fund obligation that sounds like it's gonna it's gonna break uh, records like it could be number one on the pop charts but you know now that this has been an accident and she's now kind of a spokesperson for education and, and we want her to speak next week do you think you could influence her to come and talk to the people even though this was an accident she's now the woman yeah but she's like you know she's got a, a bachelor's of high school so i think she'll be happy to come and talk you know she like yo two plus two is four you know out the door take it to the store you want some more i sing the song because i am not eating a hostess ding dong because i like cupcake Wow, do you write her songs? That's so, uh, that's deep. deep all right, all right, we're sleep. out of time. Uh, Baby, pee, pee. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks. Back to you. Wow, that's some brilliant lyrics right there. Now for a look at the weather, let's check in with Yucker Hurricane, who's in Berkeley, England, for the 2017 Ugliest Cow Festival. How's the weather and all the bovinian festivities, Yucca? Okay, but it is so nice to be in England. I tell you, I'm working on my English accent. Can you hear it coming through a little bit? I tell you something. I've, I am at the ugliest cow festival. Oh my, look at that. Two others on that one. Look at the others on that one. Woohoo! Oh, squeak me with the cow milk in the face. Oh my gosh. I tell you, the weather here is milky. It's milky weather. It is so milky here. I am moisturized. for that absolutely excellent report on the weather and thank you all for tuning into wind world local news on mile high sports radio i'm potter smith stay tuned for community court next on the world improv network give the wind cast your suggestions via facebook twitter or by calling into the mile high sports radio studio line during the break for a case that needs to be tackled during community court Next on Mile High Sports Radio.